back at it again and we've got to dive into this whole uh speaker situation a little bit more because things things have gotten a little crazy to say the least like share comment hit that subscribe button if you are new and let's dive in this what do you think this. it's going to do for the republican party and chances of holding on to leadership and the majority when it looks like you're having you're the uh, ringleader of a circus led by matt gates who likes to blow things up but not offer any new ideas are you happy following matt gates is that your leader i'm not oh he's mad he's mad mad i thought y'all were supposed to be right-leaning media that that doesn't sound supportive of the right crazy following matt gates i made my own decision i didn't ask matt but if matt gates didn't approval, challenge but... you weren't going to challenge do what if matt gates I, didn't I, stand up you weren't going to challenge you know I that believe i believe i believe i would have oh. hold on it it, it it gets it gets worse y'all keep keep listening to this because this is just an absolute slap in the face i, I what, what he does Check what this out. if matt gates I, didn't I, stand up you weren't going to challenge you know I that believe i i believe i would have oh come I on I, and they're, and they're oh, well Please, you, you know, were praying please, about please. it one minute. The next minute you're going to lead an insurgency. And so you don't think that praying about it's important? Is that what you're saying? One, one minute that's, you're, you know, that's praying what you're praying about how you're going to vote with Matt Gates, and the next minute you're going to lead an insurgency. Listen, you got a predetermined answer to everything. I, I no, prayed I, have about an, it. I have an opinion about what's going on. So it's a problem that he prayed about it. That's an issue. Shows me a lot about who you are. Shows me a whole lot. Now. Granted, I, I kind of already had a clue, right? You know, come on now. I'm, I mean, I'm new to politics, but I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I didn't hop into politics last night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that that shows me a whole lot. And I lost a lot of respect for this guy um, saying some stuff like that, man. Because if, if that were to have been any other religion, it would have not have been accepted whatsoever. Any other, you name it, don't matter. Any Any other one. It wouldn't have been accepted. What a f***ing joke, man. Do you have and an opinion, too? And the next minute, you're going to lead an insurgency? Listen, you got a predetermined answer to everything. I, I no, I have, about an, I have an opinion about what's going on. Do you have and an opinion, too? And you talk over me every time I try to make All a right, point. Make your point. The point is, is that we're $33 trillion in debt. This speaker was woefully, woefully lacking in leadership skills. He always placed the blame somewhere else. America is going to be better off with new leadership. And right. That's the and who line. is it? Yeah, possibly, possibly could be Steve Scalise. It could be Elise Stefan. It could be Roger Williams out of Texas. It could be um, uh, Mark Green out of Tennessee. So they all, supported, they all supported Kevin McCarthy, including the most conservative guy I know, Jim Jordan. Why are you smarter than Jim Jordan and, and the 210 plus Republicans? Why are you smarter? I represent my district, brother. And why are you smarter than me? You're right. condemning me well, because I'm just I, saying, I stand up on my own, and that's, that's I'm not what condemning I do. you. I'm questioning you. You don't like being no, you're questioned? Not. You're, no, you're just – the line of questioning is very negative, and you know that, and I right. know that. You And, and when I, this is all over with, when this is all over with, and we have a new speaker and we're running smooth, let's have this conversation again. Nah, I don't even want to hear the conversation. Don't. I'm, I'm not even interested. Shout out to Tim. I believe his name is Tim Burchett. Uh, this gentleman over here on the right. Uh, shout out to him. He handled that 100% correct. Um, and any of these establishment folks. <laughs> how disgusting, man. How utterly disgusting was that? You know, I, I, I mean, you can't. Ah. Well, I, I say you can't, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll find some kind of way, right? I was going to say, you can't stoop any lower than that. But, you know, I, I, should, I should pause on saying that one. You know, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth there. But, you know, of course, <clears throat> this stuff has gotten out of hand, man. I mean, it's just... It's not a hard right, uh, uh, I, in, you know, intransigent lawmaker. Nancy is a fiscal hawk. She's been a fiscal yeah. hawk the whole time. And to get her to vote... For not Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Mace, this, this this lady here. Actually, it's right here at the bottom of the screen, but my head's in the way. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Nancy Mace out of uh, South Carolina. You ain't talk about Nancy Pelosi for those that were like, wait, what? <laughs> Nancy Mace. She was one of the eight or one of the seven. There was eight total if you include Matt Gates, but she was one of the other seven uh, that voted with Matt Gates to uh, oust McCarthy, retire McCarthy.
for the Limit Save Grow bill. It was an open secret in this town that Kevin had to agree to bring her bill up for a balanced budget amendment. Nancy leveraged her vote to get something that is really important to the American people up for consideration. And I was heartened by that because Kevin had promised uh, the 20 the same thing. Like the law requires these single subject spending bills and a budget to be passed. What's hard, right, about saying you, when you say 72 hours to read the bill, you don't get to waive that to pass a continuing resolution. What, what's hard, right, about saying something that spends more than $100 million should not go on the suspension agenda where it is not subject to amendment? The things I am fighting for are good government. and. Reasonable things. Yeah. And by the way, the last we minute. would vote different ways on some of these amendments. Yeah. And there's an interesting mm -hmm. ability with with more voting and actual legislating Much for coalitions to form. Yes. And on for us to work together. And, and it'll be okay if we take a lot of votes. If we're together on some things, debate against one another on others, that's real governing. And it never happens here because they delay everything, back you up against shutdown politics, and then just get you to vote for a continuing resolution where the lobbyists are in charge <laughs> of what's in it. He believed that Washington was broken. The normal system of selecting leadership in both parties Listen. is based on the redistribution of lobbyists and special interest money. And so it creates a covenant that's not really built on trust or merit or vision, but trading money for political support. And we wanted to send a shock to that DC cartel system and to say, no, guess what? There's gonna have to be a different way you get there. And uh, the concessions we sought principally fell into like three buckets. Mm. You revealed the truth. It's all about that almighty dollar. That's what it's all about. The almighty dollar. The next person that steps up, can you garner the support of, you know, the, the, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call them? Crap. Can you garner the big donors, right? That the last person had, can you do it? And you know, I, I, I've got, I'm, I'm going to show you guys this, um, and I don't know when I'm going to drop this video, but I showed you this in another video. I don't know which video is going to drop first. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you guys this. And I think you're going to really find this interesting uh, after he said that. Check this out. So as you can see here, you've got Kevin McCarthy as the top guy. Which shows why he was the top guy in the house. Um and take a look here. I mean, you got Katie Porter there, but look who else is up here. Hmm. Kind of interesting, huh? Interesting. I find this one interesting, too. Mr. Schiff. Mr. Schiffy Schiff. And, you know, you know, it's interesting that uh, this guy's being considered. Huh. Name sound familiar? Yeah. One of the guys who possibly could become the next speaker. Oh, and look who else is on this list, too. Wow, interesting, you know, Dan being on this list, oh my goodness, uh, Texas District 2, man, what are y'all doing, what are y'all doing, my goodness, y'all, y'all, y'all gotta do something different, uh, Texas District 2, any other Republican, okay, get this guy out of here, Dan Crenshaw, what a snake, now, Marjorie Taylor Greene is on this list as well, but that makes sense, that makes sense, and I'll tell you why it makes sense. It's because Marjorie Taylor Greene is everywhere. She's she's everywhere. She's she's doing interviews. She's always being mentioned on the news, right? Mainstream media. So she's pretty popular. You know, everybody knows who Marjorie Taylor Greene is. If you were to ask, you know, um, if you were to poll, you know, Democrats, right, and ask them if they knew who Marjorie Marjorie Taylor Greene is or Steve Scalise. I guarantee you, almost nobody would know who Steve Scalise was, but a chunk of them would know who Marjorie Taylor Greene is. That's what I mean by that makes sense. She's popular. She, she's a known name. You know, even AOC here at the bottom, the darling of the Democrat Party, that makes some sense too. And I, I would argue the same with the same thing. People can recognize that name, you know, so that one makes a bit of sense, but it's funny that the establishment is like coming out in full force because this this stuff is just huh. It's it shows a lot. It really does. I mean, you had the guy from from I don't even want to say it at this point, but also, of course, you have 96% of the Republicans voted for McCarthy. 
Four percent voted against him. From my position as a longtime Republican activist, they're traitors. All eight of them should, in fact, be primaried. They should all be driven out of public life. What they did was to go to the other team to cause total chaos. We ought to be focusing on Biden. We ought to be focusing on the economy. We ought to be focusing on the border. Instead, you're going to get a week or 10 days of the media focusing on Republican disarray. Oh, it's an astonishingly destructive behavior by a handful of egocentric people who think they're superior to 96% of the conference. I, I love how they mention uh, e even the guy from, you know, the, uh, the news station. I'll just say that. <laughs> mention the conference you know they think they're smarter than 90 percent 96 percent of the rest of them well no they listen to the people now granted I, i'm just the guy who makes youtube videos from time to time i'm you know i'm i'm, I'm this big when it comes to you know politics right in the in, in in the grand scheme of politics i'm i'm this significant i'm this significant i'm, I'm, I'm not very significant at all but take a look do you agree with matt gates or kevin mccarthy 401 of you voted small sample size but you know um look at the number take a look it's not even close it's not even close i don't i don't care how high this number goes you you could take it to a hundred thousand a hundred million with this amount with this big of a spread kevin's not winning he's not winning it's just not happening so to sit here and say, oh, Matt Gates and those seven, they are terrible people. They're traitors. No, they are not. You are the traitor. You are the terrible person. You're supposed to work for us, not the other way around, and not work for the lobbyists and special interests that give you some donor dollars. Fuck no. You work for us. Matt Gates works for the people. Exhibit A. Exhibit A, and this isn't the first time I've taken a poll. I've taken several of them. Now, yes, I will admit I am this significant in the political sphere. When it comes to politics, I'm this significant. I am very small, okay? Especially when you when you when you compare me to the likes of like Tucker Carlson or even even somebody like Ben Shapiro or whoever, right? I'm this big, right? I get it. I get it. But still, I I, I don't care how many people voted. Kevin McCarthy's not winning. He's not winning. It's just not happening. So I, 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 I just don't understand. Well, I do understand because, you know, it's, it's gotten really, really crazy lately to the point where uh, you even have someone like Hillary. And I showed you guys this clip yesterday, but there's others saying we need to be deprogrammed. What does that mean? And sadly, so many of those extremists, those mega extremists, um, take their marching orders from Donald Trump. And when do they break with him? You know, because at some point, you know, maybe there needs to be a formal deprogramming of the cult members. Terms being tossed around like deprogramming Trump followers. All of America needs deprogramming because we've all been negatively influenced by Donald Trump. Can't uh, sit down with people don't, that don't recognize there was an insurrection. Megan alluded the other day to the deprogramming that uh, Katie Couric talked about. Deprogramming that might work in other cases is um, it's obviously proven to be difficult. But many of them have allowed the lies really to seep into their soul and it's beginning to rot their minds. Taking it even a step further, Raskin told the New York Times that he's ordered books about cults and deprogramming to try to understand his Republican colleagues. People have literally been brainwashed and it's scary by the myths and disinformation that is online, that is being the propaganda on Fox News. It is another epidemic that our country is facing. And until we really hold platforms accountable, until we really do some deprogramming. And anyone like him that says, uh, the uh, press is the enemy of the people. That's what Hubbard would say. That's what Moon said. If you say this is a cult, what's the first step of deprogramming? The first step with anyone who's a true believer is contact with people uh, that are outside the bubble. I mean, I was just trying to engage in a little deprogramming with all of these myths about COVID-19. Is there any convincing those people that they're not living in a world of reality or facts no listen if there was a deprogramming pill that i could put in everybody's stocking for christmas i would do it it's because 
<laughs> I'm just gonna end that there. That uh, it's just absolutely re- deprogramming. So let let me let me ask a couple of questions. What about um, Trump supporters needs to be deprogrammed? Let me know. Let me know because the last time I checked, Trump supporters aren't extremists. You know. Right. Of course, you're going to have your outliers. You have outliers in any situation of circumstance or any group of individuals, any large group, at least. You're going to always have outliers. But for the most part, from what I've seen is when there are outliers, Trump supporters call them out. We call them out. I've called them out right here. Like, no, you're not a Trump supporter. If you are, you wouldn't be doing this foolish, this foolish mess. Uh, I, I, I think there was a guy I want to say in New York. Who was just like going crazy and blah, 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 I'm a Trump supporter, you know? And I'm like, bro, you, you're not a Trump supporter. Stop it with the nonsense. Stop it. Stop it. If you're a true Trump supporter, you wouldn't be doing this craziness. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be doing all this this crazy stuff. And and people there even called them out. They said you you look like a plant, you know. And then the guy like started sobbing and went, I don't, I don't, I don't fit in any group. You guys remember that clip? Oh man, it's been a while, but. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, Trump supporters call that stuff out. We aren't extremists. We aren't out here threatening anybody. At least I'm not aware of anything. I haven't seen anybody, you know, calling, you know, people up or, you know, threatening anybody or any type of way like the left does when the left doesn't get their way, right? They call up and, and threaten the business and do that and do this. So who's the extremist when it comes to threat threats? It's not the right. We aren't doing it. If we make a phone call, it's a friendly phone call. Hey, if you don't do what we need you to do, come next election, we're going to vote you out, right? Come on now. Come on now. Uh, uh, the, the right doesn't, the left has one situation that they can run to in terms of the right being violent. And we all know that situation. They have one. We have lots. Whenever the left doesn't get their way or whenever they feel like they're being um, stepped on, so to speak, they lash out. They destroy things, they loot, they burn, they do all types of crazy stuff. You don't see the right doing that. So again, how are we extremists? How are we the problem? Tell me, tell me. When we look at somebody like Matt Gates, right? Like, like he was explaining, how is he the problem when most of the people said we don't want Kevin McCarthy, but y'all forced Kevin McCarthy on us anyway? How was he the problem? I thought y'all worked for us, not lobbyists. As far as I'm concerned, it seems like um, we're not extreme. We're not crazy. We're actually quite sane, <laughs> right? We're actually quite peaceful, unlike the left. I've got countless videos of, and, and th- this is where the phrase, um, when the facts come out, they run came from. I've got countless videos of people on the left when they get asked a question that they can't refute, they, set, they, they they call names and say all types of crazy things and storm off. You don't see that typically from people on the right. When's the last, where's, when have you, when's the last video you saw of someone on the right, a Trump supporter, yelling and screaming and calling somebody all types of names? I'm sure it exists. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. Once again, there's always outliers in a large group of individuals, of course, but... In terms of the number of instances or the number of times you've seen it, we see it all the time with the left. It's not just a one-off or, you know, just just a here and there kind of thing. It's all the time with the left. You rarely ever see it with the right. But all of a sudden, we're the extremists. We're the ones that need to be deprogrammed. It sounds like there's an agenda being pushed and the people on the right, the Trump supporters realize it and the people on the left don't realize it quite yet. And so the establishment wants to deprogram us, so we just kind of fall in line. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a lunatic. I don't know. Maybe I, I maybe I need to take a you know a, a, you know some some kind of pill or something. I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm the crazy. Am I the crazy one? Y'all let me know. Maybe I'm Looney Tunes, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs or something. I, <laughs> like I said, I'm just the guy that makes videos from time to time. That's all. But as always, man, y'all stay safe out there. Thanks for tuning in once again. Peace and love. I'm out.